Maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out. First, let's hit this one. The usual function for getting rid of connections that are very close by is to flood them with solder. So that both points are filled. So you have covered both points there. Now, don't touch the soldering iron. There we go. This up. Apply a little bit of outward pressure to the LED. And then out the solder point. And that is not coming out. So. Feels like the bottom point. Still a little bit of solder on there. So let's stick it in the through hole. There we go. Gotcha. And uh, we set those aside so we can still use them. And last switch. didn't look right. I know that works, we hope. I have set before yeah. thee an open door. No man is shut. Thou hast a little strength, and hast kept to my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, so we can see we did mulch one of these. There's only one connection there. So failure of desoldering. <clears throat> Rest. I might have to modify this to be a 60% after I spray paint it orange, of course.
So since this doesn't have a plate, it shouldn't actually require any effort to push out. Holy, holy, it's the Lord God Almighty. So this actually has, these are PCB mounts, which means they've got these little holes in them. And everyone's designing their boards nowadays to have these extended holes to cover Alps and Matthias and also these uh, uh, cherry. But when you do that, it expands this hole, it makes it a lot larger. So people put in their switches, and uh, there's actually a few, well, maybe not. Uh, they put in their switches, and since those holes are so big, they wind up coming in. They wind up going in, and they go in a little bit skewed, and they don't really realize until they actually put the caps on. People need to be designing their boards to have these little PCB mount holes, because uh, unless you need the space, it doesn't really you don't really lose anything for it. So I'm going to start on this switch here and see what I can get done, and uh, see what kind of resistance I'm going to be up against. Hopefully that these additional connections are uh, easy to get off, but we'll see. Uh, I might take the end cutters and just push on them and snip them, see how close I can get. If it's a full through hole though, I'm not going to get very far. But I'm not sure that uh, this side has uh, solder expo or copper the pads exposed so it might just be one side and if it is I can just go along with the nippers and cut these off or worst case scenario the Dremel the dreaded Dremel take a Dremel to fiberglass you'll have lots of fun <laughs> fiberglass is just the worst they consider it for making plates though it's pretty much just glue but whatever let's see how far we get I do not have switch top removers, so we're going to be playing this by ear a little bit.
Yeah. It's just a short. So it's not an actual diode, it's just... It, this board supports diodes, but these switches don't have them. And because it doesn't have them, they've shorted them with, uh, with this just little connecting metal. So, uh, I didn't see a pad on the other side. So it's probably just soldered on the back. Which means I might be able to nip that guy. Right, well, we'll find that later. So here's a little modification to this. Uh, so here's a little tweak here. Because there are only pads on this side, if you push the soldering iron through the hole, you're pushing the uh, this little piece of steel, this guy right here, you're pushing it through to the other side. And once it comes up on the other side, it's not going to be attached. So generally you have to apply heat to the solder and then apply pressure to it so that it breaks through. Because if you take your heat away from the solder, it reforms on the, the metal element. This is not the case here because it's not it's probably not going to reach. So we can just push down on some of this. Oh, wait. I did actually nip those earlier, so it might be what's required. There we go. Just to reduce the height of these ends. These nippers are not that great. Get good end cutters. They're worth it. Some really good ones at work. It's like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be like. So I've trimmed the the end here, and now I'm just putting, touching the soldering iron, pushing down, and then pushing through the hole. You can probably see what's going on here. Uh, it's not really poking out, but we'll see it when the switch falls. Uh, the other technique for this, uh, just particularly for PCBs, PCB mount without the plate, is you can push down on that mount point, or push down on that center point, 
I'll give those what we've been using. And then lay your soldering iron flat so that it touches both ends. And then nothing happens. Because you screwed up. What are you doing? Huh. So we can see the switch is tilting that direction, which means it's still holding on over here, I think. There we go. So uh, something that goes all the way through the hole is probably a better idea. So here's the result. So that came out. This thing looks nasty. That's not, you know, functionally that's not an issue. Unless you want to put LEDs into this switch, in which case you'll have to take it apart to take out that steam.